if I get in, then I just might drown. Slipping this night in. I can swim in it all night in. Slipping this night in. I just slipping in a slide in. Trip, trip, slipping in a slide in. It's your girl Brittany and today I have somebody that is very special and very popular at the moment. His name is Vellis. What's going on? Vellis on the track. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Um, so kind of tell me about your relationship with uh, French Montana. Are you are you a cook boy? Or? Yeah, you know I'm signing, I'm signing him as an artist and producer. I'm signing a cook boy. Okay. Shout out French, shout out Chang, shout out Zach. Gabby, what up? And you know. how did you meet French? Um. I met I met French through a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out my my guy Jared. He uh he uh he was cool with God. He played some of my stuff for God. God was interested in managing me. So um God set up like a little you know a little meeting. We we like uh we went to the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. And then one of um, my favorite places. It's dope. It's, it's good. <laughs> we went to the Cheesecake Factory and. He like you know we was just chopping it up and then uh, he played some of my stuff for French. I wanted French to get on like a record. Right. French heard like a records and was just like play me another one and you know from there he was like yo bring him here I want to I want to I want to I want to vibe with him like I want I want bring him in. Mm -hmm. So I came through the crib and we just vibed and me and him played each other like records back and forth just vibing and um the energy was good and then I'm over there also I'm with Swanky Music Group. Shout okay. Out to Cosme and Rocco, Cheech, what up? And then kind of the rest is history. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and then a lot of people don't even realize that French Montana is like a multifaceted artist, right? He's not just a rapper, but he also like he sings on hooks because yeah. he's like all over Rick Ross's shit. And then you know he also does production. So what? Yeah, master with yeah. So what was it like initially? How was the initial original track when you were producing it before French kind of added his touch on it? And well, then. He, he, you know, he, he had like a lot of ideas that got added in because he doesn't actually make beats. Right. But he had like a lot. But he's like, of, I like this sound. Add this on it. Is that like kind of how it goes? that kind of stuff. And you know, they did that. They touched up on that. But I had already, you know, made the main part of the beat and the skeleton mm -hmm. and everything. Like when it wasn't even really a skeleton, it was the main part of the beat. Yeah. And um, I had made that sitting on the couch, and I, it was a record that me and French, like we was just in the studio vibing with. He, he has some ideas for it. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, he always has ideas for every track. That he that he has, yeah, and a lot of things that you know, because there's more than one thing that goes into production. But but um, the, the regular track the, sounded like what you hear right now, right now, and then there's a couple of things that's like added. But my part is like the cons what I did on it is the consistent. The part. main the main part. Like the balance, all of that is all you know. It's all you. Yeah. Okay, and then like, how excited were you to to finally hear like the final version, especially the CDQ that just came out with like the whistling bridge, and then you have like uh, you know like Theophilus, and you have like Paul McCartney on it. Like, how do you like that part? Have you heard the CDQ version of the song? Yeah. Okay. So how do you like? How do you feel about the um, whole project? As I whole? think it's dope, man, and I think um, you know I went crazy when I heard Paul McCartney on it because mm -hmm. it's just like man, like I, I'm a, I'm a Beatles fan. Okay. You know what I mean. And um, I mean, I was just ecstatic when I heard, you know, Paul McCartney on it. I love Paul McCartney. I feel like he, like he's just a genius, bro. Like I love what he's done with the Beatles. I love what he's done by himself. I like, you know, the chemistry between him and John Lennon. Mm -hmm. I like what he did with Mike Jack. Those records that they got, and you know, and I like um, I like uh, I like like his like I don't know if I said this, but his Christmas song is my favorite. I said that his Christmas like, song. He got this on my Valentine that ran his heart. <laughs> McCartney is that guy. He's so, lit. You know, like that. That's a great feeling. And uh, and then you know, Kanye being one of my favorite artists of all time, one of my greatest influences, and also be able to collab with my big bro. Right. So. Okay. So how does the record get from your couch while you're watching Saturday Night Live to Kanye? Oh, session with me in French. Okay. Kanye was there in the session. No. Or? Okay. This um, this was something that was intended for him first. Right. So you know, and then he had a session with Ye. Yay and him like played around with like five of my beats. Okay. But like um that was the one. Kind of like let me get this one. That was lucky number seven. What does Bellas mean? Um, <laughs> I used to make like back when I was like 16, mm -hmm. 15, 15, 16. There was a local artist in my hometown. I used to like be making beats for him and stuff, and he'd be like, you know, I would do hooks over there and all that. He's like, yo, this train is marvelous, yo, this train is marvelous. <sighs> Marvelous. So after that, I'm like, all right. So that's what he was doing, bro. <laughs> he looked at me. He's like, what? <laughs> he was like, yo, this is marvelous. So after that, 
like I started calling myself Mar Velas, like the chop. Yeah. Two days later, like my boys was like, yo, it's over for that Mar. You was just Velas. Everybody running school and just got around, around the town, and that's what they started calling me. Okay, so talk to me. How is Velas the producer different from Velas the singer, songwriter, rapper, <laughs> musician extraordinaire? I mean, I feel like it's all it all goes together. Uh huh. I have a lot of my own signature things that I do, but um. I don't know. I don't really think there's like a major difference. Like I'm very, you know what? The difference between me as a producer and artist mm -hmm. right now, I'm doing like I have I have a certain wave that I'm on right now as an artist. And when people you know hear my project, they'll be able to to kind of see what I'm on. But, disco. Um, the disco. Are we going like funky? Nah. Disco? Or, or what does disco mean? Um, it's me. It's me. Kind of. Rebranding disco and saying what I feel like disco is for this generation. Okay. I feel like all these or everything, and it's not even like to be a disco genre. This is still hip hop. It's just right. certain elements that I'm still keeping that from you know from what from what I was taught musically. Yeah. So you know like like I got the whole idea from um I was watching Q Tip and Funk Flex DJ. I was like standing right next to them. They was DJing at this spot in Brooklyn. Shout out to my man Really Real. He was there too. Where was it at? Uh, um, I don't even know to be honest. With it you. was in Williamsburg. It, mm -hmm. it was in Williamsburg. Yeah, it was, it was I've been there. It was like was late at night, and yeah. he does like old school. Like Q-Tip just gets in the old school. It set. was crazy. Like you talk about digging through the crates. Yeah, like, he be digging. This is for real. Like, and I, I'm big on like these kind of records. Like I listen to all music. Yeah. Like a big thing, and that's another thing that's you know big about that's that's the difference between me as a producer and an artist. Mm -hmm. Um, as a producer, I'll produce anything that you put in front of me. Like, right. I could do the same thing as an artist. I got records that's like not urban that you were hearing. Like, oh, that could really be his record. Right. But um, you know, like I like they were like you know disco ball in the middle. It was like a certain crowd, but like they started playing one of my favorite songs, Stevie Wonder, All I Do. Okay. And um, that dream was on. Like for my generation, we don't go to the club like. Or the strip club and hear you know all I do playing while we right. sipping on drinks or whatever like so that was like a, a dope experience for me and I never forgot it and the other thing that goes with it is they be calling me like Disco Vel because they be like oh he got the records that, okay. that's that's young Disco. I also saw on your Instagram you got a chance to hang out with Kris Jenner and Khloe Kardashian. How lit is that? Oh oh yeah well you know I really didn't like like you know I ain't, you know I know you took a Chloe, little photo Chloe, but you know. That's she, she yeah. Was kicking it with the set. Yeah, exactly. So, but Chris you know. Jenner is like my oh, yeah, favorite you know, out yeah, of everybody. Yeah, I did. I did get to kick it with her. Yeah, I forgot. Cause you she's know, lit. Yeah. She has the plan and she executes. Dope, it. dope. She's dope. How much better in person does she look? Yo, Cause I think she's hot already on pictures. All but. the girls are beautiful and they definitely get it from their mama. Okay. Like definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yo, this is Velis on the track. You're watching Global Ground right now. Ki, eight four five, Upper Side, Swanky, Coke Boys. Eggplant Friday. It was on my page. A whole page. Yeah, people are deleting you. You probably like, what the? F I need this for Chris, and at first we were like, nah, hell nah, this we keeping it. This is our song. You yeah. Know?